shenanigans. All right, and we're gonna start with me for the hot topics. So our hot topics, hold on, actually I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna start with Gianni for hot topics today. So Gianni, you're talking about the evangelicals. Evangelicals yes. and Trump. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so this is a truth. Um, and it is about, well, I'm gonna just kind of freestyle because all my notes disappeared from my laptop side. So, <laughs> oh, your laptop's not, <laughs> do your best, do your so, best. Um, yeah, so in an article in the LA Times, um, it spoke about the dissension of the white evangelical um, or Christian fundamentalists in America. So basically the, there were, let me think, sorry. So basically there were, um, throughout the entire Trump presidency, they were seen to support Trump. Uh, for example, the Proud Boys, um, Proud Boys yep. putting up, yeah, the Proud Boys putting up crosses at protests. This was more recent. I think this was at Michigan State or Michigan Capitol. It was at the Capitol mm -hmm. um, there. So just showing a lot of symbolism and, and not necessarily tying it to what real Christianity is or supposed to be, um, which is what the symbol of Jesus is and, and being compassionate and loving for people of, of all different and the oppressed people, especially. So um, my question to kind of sum it up, because I'm, I kind of lost my notes, but my question to sum it up is, what do you guys, do you guys believe that white evangelical fundamentalists, um, white American fundamentalists are a threat to our U.S. government or the U.S., the new presidency? That we have now. Let's let's start with uh, Robbie Rock on this. Well, um, they're clearly a an entrenched um, entity in U.S. in, in the U.S. fabric. Um, and to me, it's just one of those things where the separation of church and state is just it's required to ensure that all people are valued equally and respected equally. And my advice to those who are adhering to these fundamentalist ideas, um, if you want a Christian America, if you do vote in a theocratic government and it happens to change over time, um, or if it's not your brand of Christianity, you won't be upheld. You're going to be feeling more oppressed than you ever would. So just it's, um, it, it really, it, it is a shame. And to me, it's just, the thought of being tried in a court of law that upholds spiritual religious values is terrifying because I don't have any religious beliefs. In fact, I'm, I'm worse than that. I'm an apostate. I've turned my back on my religious beliefs. So it's um, be, be careful what you wish for. But I really I hope that they are losing ground. But they were. I think that the white supremacists were hiding behind the spiritual imagery, and they've been doing that mm -hmm. for decades, hundreds of years. Entry. Yeah, I agree. So that that's agree. hopefully that will be. Cool. Robbie, you're in the spotlight now. Yeah, Robbie, you're right. In the spotlight. I, I got buzzed <laughs> and then I got the spotlight. So I think this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the torch to someone else. <laughs> All right, Miss Anders. <laughs> One of the things that, like Rob, we brought up the separation between church and state, but as we've come to notice or realize that a lot of um, fundamentalists, a lot of even Christian evangelical extremists, they don't necessarily believe in the separation of church and state. Um, to them, it's just one big old party, if you will. And so in their minds, they are very religious. And as a result, they are the chosen ones and they are very conservative, far right wing Republicans. And so they, to them, both sides go hand in hand. Um, do I think that they've lost a little bit of their steam? Yeah, because the guy that was uh, their most vocal advocate has now been displaced. He's now been kicked out. However, a lot of these sentiments, this hatred was there long, was here in this country long before Donald J. Trump. What he did was he gave people permission to feel all of this hatred. 
permission to feel like they were superior to another race, to another gender, if you will. And I mean, again, like we talked about in the last segment, I think it's going to take some time to heal all of that. Like, truth be told, I have people who I have been going back and forth with over the past four years, some of them Christians, some of them not Christians, um, a lot of them very conservative, a lot of them Trump supporters. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. I'm not saying that I have completely cut them off, but like Maya Angelou says, when people show you who they are the first time, believe them. So yeah. now you, your sheet is gone. I see you for who you are. And so I, I think um, some of the amped up antics may tone down a little bit, but I don't think that we have gotten over this dark cloud. Um, especially since a lot of these people thought that they had a religious right to feel this way. A total yeah. misinterpretation of the Bible, of the commandments, all of that. And and like Rob, like, you know, I, I am not a religious person. I am atheist. I do not believe, but I respect other people's faith. And these folks misinterpreted everything that the Bible teaches that what we were taught growing up. And I grew up in the church, so I know the Bible. I just don't agree with it. But these people took it to a whole new level. So it's going to take a lot to bring them down off of that superior high horse. Yeah, part of the problem is that um, the Bible has been used throughout centuries, as Robbie was alluding to, that it was used as a tool for these type of um, for power a tool for power and control and you know from slavery to the middle ages to you name it you know it, it's been forever that, that religion uh and, and the bible were used in this manner and it hasn't changed to today and so we still have people who are using religion and and christianity and uh, uh, even even muslims i mean we have fundamentalist muslims we have Fundamentalist Christians, we have um, Protestants. We, I mean, you name it, it runs the gambit. Religion has, has, throughout history, been used to enslave and demean and, and control people. So, um, you know, does that mean that the people that have their faith are wrong? No, absolutely not. I mean, you, your faith is your faith, and it's, um, it's just a shame that it's been warped in such a way by so many evil people. Now, to the question about whether or not, you know, they have power uh, anymore, yeah. I, again, you know, their bullhorn is gone, you know? So yeah. I, I've been saying it pretty much every show, they're going to crawl back into the shadows where they came from. You know, they got emboldened to come out and say, hey, you know, it's like, like when you, you know, when, it, when you turn the lights off and roaches come out, you know, and so, you know, Trump <laughs> turned the light off a little while and the roaches started to come out. But, you know, now we flip the light back on, the roaches are going to flee and hide where they came from. That doesn't mean they're going to die and go away, but they're going to—they're they're not going to be as prevalent. They're not going to be as bold to just openly. There's there's some that are just going to do what they do. I mean, I'm not saying that this is not 100 percent, but we're not talking. You know, there, there's a small subset of people that felt more emboldened than they were before. Um, so, um, do you believe that there is a different threat beside Trump um, not being the president anymore? Um, for example, I found that like maybe millennials, like just this new kind of millennials and, and same sex marriage and all of that kind of like ideals that are out there and are more accepted. I feel like that kind of prompts them. Well, that's a bad use of words, but like <laughs> that kind of like <laughs> that kind of like helps them die out more because there's not a lot of people with the same thoughts, especially. No, not I, I, I think I think there's always people on opposite spectrums. Um, and so I think you're, you're going to always have people that hate other people for whatever they do, whatever they look like, whatever they say. And there's going to be other people on the other side that, you know, feel the way they feel. And so there's always going to be that, that spectrum. Um, it's just a matter of the people in the middle, you know. Well, but we also, too, need to get rid of this idea um, that a lot of these sentiments die out. Just because something is laying dormant, underneath the surface mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's dead doesn't mean that it's gone it's yep. just cooking 
It's just marinating, getting ready to come out the way it did over the past four years. And who's to say that someone isn't going to come out and replace Trump? You know, he still, if he wants, he still has a platform. That's what social media is for. That's what, you know, he could start his own network if he so chooses to do so. And so I, I, you know, I think that um, hopefully cooler heads will prevail and everyone will go to their corner and take a deep breath. But we also have to be aware and cognizant of the fact of, about all of these people, especially within law enforcement, especially within the military, especially within the government, yep. who felt emboldened to come out. That's a, there's a lot of people in the government that we need to deal with. So, yeah, yeah. so it's something that we need to be aware, aware of, cognizant of as we move forward in this healing process. Well, Mike Winter says, uh, the article that I read was about the fact that some of the evangelicals were finally addressing their cognitive dissonance and hypocrisy with respect to supporting Trump and his misogyny and racism. Um, Kevin Thaxton says, the U.S. is not a Christian nation. The Founding Fathers, Masons specifically, didn't have a national religion. There is freedom of religion for a reason. A theocracy is equal to Sharia law. There's a freedom of religion in theory. That's not necessarily the reality. Like, you really aren't that free to be a Muslim in this country, especially under the Trump regime, where he was trying to get all, eradicate all Muslims in this country. Didn't even want them to come and live here, to visit here. So, yeah, in theory, there's freedom of religion here, but it's not always the case in practice. Yeah. Annette Brown says, unfortunately, narcissism snakes through fundamental religious communities uh, and some less fundamental ones. And narcissism was there in those r rigid belief systems well before Trump. And uh, I like this comment from Mike Winter. Picking and choosing parts of the Bible and parts of the Constitution has been a hallmark of Falwell, which was a, the person who brought this group to the Republican Party in the early 80s, calling, talking about the evangelical. Uh, that was post-Vietnam. Um, if you think about religion, remember back when Trump, Trump started the birtherism movement back in 2007, 2008, um, against Barack Obama saying that he wasn't really an American, he wasn't really born here? Another fear tactic that he used with the right was that he was Muslim. Mm -hmm. He kept yep. telling people that he was Muslim, that he was a Christian. Not only is he not mm -hmm. from the United States, he's from Africa, and he's Muslim. And, and they sure played up Hussein in his name. Exactly. And so the Tea Party, the um, right-wing conservatives, all of those people took that and ran with it as a reason why he shouldn't be trusted. So, yeah, the, the, the freedom of religion thing here is on a small scale, if you ask yeah. me. All right. Uh, and then I got some props from uh, Sherry Blaine Priest. She says, uh, Neo Nix, good comments on faith. Agree 100%. All right. Let's get on, let's get on to the next hot topic. Truth, lies, shenanigans.